Welcome to the Ford Escape Plug-In Hybrid. In Australia, this powertrain is only available with the sporty ST line trim and with front wheel drive. Ford is one of only a few brands at the moment that offers a plug-in hybrid option in this class. So straight away, it stands out with a point of difference. On the outside, it looks pretty much identical to the regular Escape range. It's curvy, distinctively Ford, and reasonably modern thanks to the detailed light clusters. But overall, it does blend in with the crowd and it's a bit boring in my opinion. As mentioned, this variant is front wheel drive and it features a fairly basic torsion beam rear suspension setup. The ride is a bit bouncy and direct, but the handling is quite agile for this class. The steering is also very responsive, almost too responsive and touchy. And that's despite these rather tall profile 22560 Continental tires. They're mounted on the same 18 inch alloy wheels as the non-hybrid ST line. Charging is available via a Type 2 socket, but you don't have to plug it in if you don't want to. You can drive this as a regular hybrid as well. Obviously the best economy is achieved when you have a full battery, however. Inside, the Escape is surprisingly spacious and practical. I like how the design is a bit conventional, a bit normal. It doesn't have awkward shapes or futuristic trimmings that stick out for no reason. In that way, it is easy to get comfortable in here and understand where everything is and how it all works. The digital gauge cluster is a bit complex at first, and the menu system takes some getting used to, but the main media screen is simple and clear. Again, if a bit basic. These ST line seats in the front look pretty good, but when you sit in them, you might notice they don't actually offer that much support. Comfortable, yes, but a bit flat for a ST inspired model in my opinion. Rear seat space is plentiful for this class and you get climate vents and two different charging port options. Middle seat legroom is a particular standout, thanks to a low driveline hump. According to the specs, the boot space is no different in the hybrid compared with the rest of the range. That's pretty good and not common, as battery systems usually take up space. It's good to see pull tabs on the wall so you can flip down the rear seats from the back, and there's a 12 volt socket available to support road trips. Under the floor is a space saver spare wheel. That's not ideal, but it's better than having a repair kit, as featured in some rivals. As for the powertrain, this uses a 2.5 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol engine, paired with two electric motors and a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery. The electric range is listed at 56 kilometres, and combined power is a decent 167 kilowatts. Performance is okay, but considering the front-wheel drive Toyota RAV4 hybrid is quicker with less power, according to our tests, there is probably some improvements that could be made here. We also had the opportunity to test the all-wheel drive version of the 2.0-litre Turbo ST line. Since the front-wheel drive model laid down some impressive numbers when we tested it last, we assumed the all-wheel drive model would be a lot quicker, but we think the weight gain offsets some of the potential. This is what they go like.